Now then. So, other day I was driving and the light for the front brake pads came on. Plan is today, discs and pads all around, starting with the front discs and pads. We have MTEX lovely coated discs and for the fronts we have Ferrodo Racing DS 1.11s up front. For the rears we've also got the same discs but they're a little bit smaller, I haven't unpackaged them yet. And for the rears we have these EBC yellow stuffs because the backs aren't going to see as much sort of bite so you don't really need to spend a huge amount on rear pads if i had the money then we'd probably go tarox discs and pads all around but i'm not a millionaire so we've got to work with what we got hence the uh, ghetto set up there with a brick on the jacking point right first things first get the wheel off get the everything cleaned up and then we can start whacking the disc off so if you've watched any of the latest mini videos, you'll know that I'm off to the ring in a couple of months time and I've been adding bits to the car to get it ready for the trip. A roll cage, some visual modifications and I've just taken delivery of the suspension and the wheels that I'm going to throw on in a future video. Today though, I'm going to be upgrading the brakes and I've timed this perfectly because if you didn't zone out during the intro, you'll know it's time for new front pads anyway. So I thought whilst I'm changing them, I might as well order myself some new discs to swap those over too. The standard brakes aren't too bad to be honest, but you do get a little bit of fade from them after a 15 minute blast. So I'm going to keep hold of the comically large caliper and upgrade everything else. New pads, new discs, braided brake lines and high temp fluid. That should do the job. After jacking the car up, I did notice that I was going to need some new boots because these ones had split, so I've ordered some which I'll pop on later. And after taking the wheel off and banging that under the car because I forgot my axle stands, I made a start at taking the pads out. So all I'm doing here is just knocking these pins out through that hole. These are just the returning pins for that clip. This is the sensor that you can see, which is what will indicate the low brake pads on your dash. So once we've got these pins out, which I'll probably have to grab onto with a set of pliers, we can take that clip out, remove this sensor and the pads, and then we'll take the caliper off the disc, swap the disc out, put it all back together. After removing the retaining clip, knocking the pins free and prizing the worn pads back, I cracked off the bolts holding the caliper on, which were tight as fuck. But eventually I got it free, and because the pads had been pushed back already, it just slid straight off the disc. Lovely stuff. Right, so caliper's off, pads are out, all pads, and I've disconnected the sensor from this little groove in the top of the pad, ready to go back onto the new one. Nice freshies. DS 1.11s, don't know if you've seen these before, but they're meant to be mega. No fade at all, which is what you want when you go into the ring. We'll get this disc off, swap it out for that MTEC one over there in the box, we'll get it cleaned up, and then reassemble. Give this a nice clean up, because it's been a long time since this has been cleaned. Probably never has been cleaned on that far side. So yeah, we'll give it a bit of a spruce up and start reassembling. So I'm not entirely sure if I need to reuse these nipple looking bastards but they were on the OEM pads and I can refit them into the caliper once I've removed them so that's what I'm going to do. I was extremely surprised that the disc didn't put up a fight and came off nice and easy and to be fair it was in decent condition. There was a little bit of crust on the hub so I hit the worst of it with a wire wheel but one of the reasons why I chose these MTEC discs is because you can opt to have them coated meaning you won't end up with a rusty bell housing. No one wants a dirty bell do they? As you can see, these discs are drilled and grooved, which will help with cooling, but if you aren't upgrading your pads at the same time, you might find that you end up with a decrease in performance, purely because you're reducing the surface area the pad is touching. You probably won't even realise using them on the road, but it could make a difference when you're taking your car to the track. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about, doesn't it? But I'm still learning on the job, and I'll hand it over to real life Luke now, who's just found out something about the wear sensor. So, because these are classed as a race pad, the sensor will not fit into the new pad. So this will be getting tied up onto there. The sensor doesn't know if it's in the pad or if it's tied up, so we're doing that. I do know people who filed out a little groove on the pads to get the wear sensor to fit, but I'm not massively worried about refitting them myself. I'll be keeping a close eye on them anyway, so I don't need a computer to let me know when they're getting low as well. Anyhow, it was time to build the caliper back up, so once I'd popped the holding bolts back in, the pads were next, followed by the pins and the retaining clip. That is one side done. All pads out. They were pretty shot in the end. Don't worry, I'm not just sending it with ugga duggers. 142 newton metres. We're going in. Oh, 
Right, front's done. I've made a start on the back. So, what have I done so far? Jacked it up, took the wheel off, and we have taken out the two 14 millimeter, if you're gonna focus, well, 14 millimeter head bolts that go at the top and bottom of the caliper. I've then taken out the 14 millimeter torx, inverted torx bolt, which sits on the inside of here, which basically holds this carrier onto the rest of the brake assembly. I'm just about to do the bottom one, so I'll be able to then drop the carrier off and then we can change everything in there and then that gives us access to the rotor as well. The back one definitely needs a refurb. See the, uh, the paint's flaking off, but for now, we'll get everything changed, get it all cleaned up and same as the front, get it back on the car. The inverted Torx bolts were very, very tight coming out and there isn't a great deal of room to get to the bottom bolt, but I got it. And once they were out, the carrier was free. Everything needs a good clean up, but I'll worry about that after I've swapped the discs over. Again, there wasn't a massive amount of wear on this disc. A slight lip maybe on the outside, but nothing major. However, the new ones look so much better. As you'd expect, everything behind the brake disc needed a good clean up as well. And once that was done, it was time to wind the piston back in. Now you can go out and get a retracting tool dedicated to the brand of car that you have, but I've just got a universal one. It does the trick on most things to be honest, with the exception of some really odd stuff and it was only a tenner. EBC do have different grades of pads and the yellow stuff ones are kind of the middle of the road, but with the budget that I wanted to spend, they're going to do the trick nicely on the rears. Anyhow, it was time to prep the disc by getting it nice and clean before fitting it back onto the car. The carrier with our fresh pads went on after that and then the rest of the caliper just bolts onto it. Simple as. Once the wheel was back on and everything was tight, it was time to do the other side, which is just a repeat of what I've done here. Then I can take it out for a spin and get them pads bedded in. Now to get these specific pads bedded in, Ferrodo Racing state in the instructions to carry out 25 to 30 4 second trail braking applications, using about 50% force on the brake pedal. This is just going to gradually warm everything up and burnish the face of the pad so you end up with nice even wear across the full disc. This is going to sound tory as well, but I wouldn't recommend having a cappuccino right before doing this because you will feel sick. However, I struggled on like the big boy I am and the pads are now fully ready to use on the ring. You might be thinking, Luke, you haven't fitted the braided brake lines, and well, that's because I'm going to do that in literally a week's time from me posting this video, when the Mini goes up to Williams Performance for a service and to have some other parts fitted. So whilst it's up on the ramp, I can swap the new lines on, top the system up with high temp brake fluid, and whilst I'm there, it'll also make it a little bit easier to bleed the brakes. If you've got a keen eye, you might have noticed the new wheels. I will do a dedicated video just on those because it can be a minefield looking for wheels for these Minis, especially ones with John Cooper works calipers but yeah hopefully this video was useful to you if there's anything you want to know about this particular setup ask away in the comments and i'll do my best to help you out remember to do all that good stuff like comment subscribe all that jazz and i'll see you in the next one bye